Hi everyone, welcome back, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome, welcome, I am Sandy. I am gonna be showing you some creative ways to decorate your junk journal pages. And I am working in this mushroom journal that I am decorating up. I have the signature sewed in, but I'm just gonna go through and decorate some of the pages and let me share with you some different ideas. So let's get started. All right, one of the first ones I am going to be doing is a little journal card with a fabric stamped image. I'm gonna use this mushroom stamp since it's a mushroom themed and um, I'm gonna be using this kind of as my inspiration here. So I'm gonna cut down this. I have this kind of cream colored paper here and I am gonna trim this down. I hope everyone is doing well. I am doing pretty good. Enjoying some college basketball right now. So this mushroom journal, if you haven't seen the videos where I make the cover and the signatures, make sure to check those out. I'll um, try to remember to link them as cards for this video. Make sure you tell me which one of these ideas is your favorite in the comments below. And then I want to stencil this up and blending brush. I am just going to use vintage photo. Go. And then the next thing I want is I want to stamp my fabric. So I just cut me off a little square off of these. And you can fray up the edges. So you want to measure. So you'll want it to be smaller, but you want your stamp to still be able to fit on there. Let me move this out of the way. And I'll need to trim this down. It's a little a little too big so I think I'll stamp it first and then I'll trim it I'm actually going to use the archival vintage photo so I don't have any issues with it <clears throat> fading or coming off and then just stamp it down and I like to just hold it there for a minute let the ink absorb up into the fabric. That looks good. And then I want to trim off the bottom a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. So if you aren't, you know, working on a mushroom journal, you can just change this theme up to whatever stamps you have available and um, just kind of go from there. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I love that. Let me find what I want to use for my paper behind it, and I'll be right back. I decided to go with this green leaf paper, and I think it'll look nice on the page. And I am just going to mark it off here, and I'm going to do a torn edge. Got the edges torn down, and next I am going to ink it up and then I will glue the cardstock and the fabric down. I'm trying to decide where I want to put it. I think I'll do the middle and that way I can sew around the edges. So I decide what page I want to put this in and I'm not going to glue it in just yet because I want to sew around the edges. And I just put a little bit, a real thin layer of Fabri-Tac glue under this fabric since it's so thin because I didn't want the Fabri-Tac glue to show through. My next page that I am working on, I am doing a different kind of belly band. So I have these two pieces of cardstock and this vellum. And I'm measuring to make sure I have the right width that it'll fit on my page. And then um, 
I tore around all the edges and inked them up to add a little bit of interest and now I'm going to tear off the vellum piece. Now these are about two inches in height and about five inches long and then I'm going to tear out the vellum to be that same size. Once I make sure it'll fit on my page, I go to my sewing machine and sew it. I sewed a zigzag stitch down each side, and I'm going to leave the threads on there. I like that. So now I'm going to go and glue down both sides and glue it to the page. So I think this is another really cute idea. I like how I can see what is in my belly band through that little vellum peekaboo. The next page idea is addressing a completely blank paper. So I have this coffee dyed paper and I decide to use this beautiful mushroom picture since this is a mushroom themed journal. And I got it out of this old book that I picked up at a old bookstore and I thought it went really well with the colors on the other side. I'd inked these up using some saran wrap with ink on it and then dip in the paper in there. So I decide I am not going to tear around the edges um, and I am going to make this a side pocket. Um, there's lots of different options. You can tear all the way around the edges. You could just glue it down. You could make it a top pocket. Um, I decide I'm going to use pumice stone. Um, I thought it just added a real nice subtle, it's hard to see on camera, but it turned out nice. And then I'm going to glue this in, like I said, as a side pocket. And I think it's great because you can either journal down in that white space down at the bottom, or you can journal on a tag and then put that into the side pocket and have some hidden journaling there. So I think this is an easy way to um, address a blank page in my journal. My next page idea, I'm pulling out this sweater can you believe it from my closet and it I loved this sweater but I never wore it so now I'm making pockets with it and I am going to use my journal to help me figure out the size I need to cut on here and once I have that I just cut this out as straight as I can it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm trying to decide if I want to just glue. My original idea was to just glue this in without any backing. But you could also put some backing behind it to make it a little bit sturdier. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do that or not. I ultimately decide to not put a backing on it. So it'll be a really delicate pocket. But I could still put um, a tag in there. Um, it just can't hold a whole lot of stuff. So I'm trimming this down a little bit more, and then I will put this into a page in the journal. I chose this page because I really like the juxtaposition of the lace um, next to that image of um, moss and all the greenery out in the forest. So I'm just going to glue this down with some Fabri-Tac glue. So I glued that in with the Fabri-Tac. And you'll want to leave your book open uh, while this dries so it doesn't glue to your opposite page. The next page I'm working on, I thought I would do a belly band. And I'm using this upholstery fabric that I got at a furniture store. And this is a little scrap left over from uh, when I made a journal with this fabric. And I love this rust color fabric on here. I am going to back it with a little bit of um, scrapbook paper, just this manila paper, to give it a little bit more strength. 
since it, I'll just be gluing it at the top and the bottom as a belly band. So um, I sewed around the edges with this wonky zigzag stitch and I thought it would be fun to add um, a slider on here. So I have this label that I received from a friend in a happy mail and I'm just going to um, fold this over and just glue it on the edge there and that way it'll still be able to slide up and down. And um, I want to do this before I glue the belly band in, obviously, otherwise I won't be able to get it on there. And this paper, this page that I'm decorating this on, I have a video on how I made this, but I inked up this uh, book page um, just to add a little more color. It's another way um, like you could just stencil, but I thought it would be fun to use my ink sprays and decorate up that page. So now um, this thing can slide up and down and I'm ready to glue this in. Now on that label, I could add, you know, an inspirational word or um, some other little tag or some pictures of a mushroom or butterfly or anything like that. Um, so I'll have to think about that. I'll come back and do my final uh, detailed decorating later. So I'm just going to use my fabric chat glue and glue this in. And I really think this is a fun, fun addition to any journal page. And I love using this upholstery fabric. So I just want to make sure this is pushed down really well. Remember to leave a comment down below and let me know which of these ideas is your favorite, if you can pick a favorite. And also I have another video with some other creative ways to decorate journal pages, so make sure to check that out if you haven't. So on this next page, I thought I would add some hidden journaling, and um, I'm going to show you how I fold this up to create some uh, hidden journaling space here and glue it onto that page. So you'll take an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, or if you have decorative or scrapbook paper, cut it down to 8.5 by 11. So I would start by folding it in half, and once I have it folded in half, I then want to fold it into thirds. And this doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but you do want to leave just a little bit of, of space there so that it um, folds and opens nicely. They don't interfere with each other. So I leave about a half or a quarter of an inch gap there. And then once I have the folds um, in thirds, folded in thirds, I then am going to take each of the corners and fold them down to that line. And so then you'll have four different um, triangles folded in, essentially. And then I fold it back up in half. And then I just fold these two flaps in and tuck them into each other. And then I'll just glue the back of that onto the page and then I'll be able to open this whole page up and journal on it in the journal. I'm trying to decide if I want to make this a pocket on the back or just glue the whole thing in and also trying to decide my placement where I want to to glue this onto the page. But you can see here it opens up because you're just gluing that back little center section on. So you have this fun little hidden journaling spot. So next I'm going to ink this up and do a little decorating. I've decorated this up. So let me show you what I did. So first off I did some stenciling with this leaf stencil on this flap and on this flap. You can see that. So then on this flap, I had this trim from the paper 
pack and I saved that. So I put a little bit of that there. And then I took one of my um, specimen cards and put that there. And I put, I had the other trim from the other piece of paper and put some of that behind there. And I actually made this a pocket. So if I wanted, I could put like a tiny little tag in there. And then on this side, I just added some washi tape and this little field label. And then as this was closed up, that was looking a little bare. So I added a little washi tape back there. And I think that jazzed it up just nice. And so the inside is all still plain. And then you also still have a pocket back here as well. On this page, I'm going to do another little hidden journaling spot. Uh, so I'm going to take this, um, it's a cut apart that came with this paper pack, and I am going to do a cut on it. Now you'll want, if you're going to do this, you'll want to have a sturdy, either a postcard or a sturdy piece of cardstock or, or decorative paper. And then you'll need another um, smaller piece of paper that will be your hidden journaling spot. And you will have that glued onto one section of this. So I am going to cut this not in half. Um, so I'm going to mark it and then I'm going to trim it down. It's about, I think, an inch and a half. And just cut that down. And then I have my two pieces. And so the short piece is the one that I'm going to glue my journaling card to. So I take my glue and glue that down. I think this is a fun way to add a little interactiveness to a journal page and also have a little bonus hidden journaling spot. And once I have that glued on, I will need uh, another piece of paper for the backing on the big section. And that will hold my journaling card in place on the page. So I'm just taking this uh, coffee dyed paper and I'm going to trim it down. And then I am going to glue that onto this page. But I'm only going to glue around the three edges so that my journaling card can slide in and out essentially making a hidden pocket. So glue this down and then I'll get it added to my journal page. I thought this would be a good page to put it on because it complements that coffee dyed paper on the opposite side and I just want to make sure I glue this in to where it'll fit and um, I can still slide that out. I could make that a pocket as well on the back but I think I'm just going to glue that on all the way um, and not make that a pocket. I'll probably do some additional little embellishments on the front. I'll probably come back and work on that later. And also, I'll probably add some washi tape to the back of that to cover that up on that side. I decided to use collage paper on this coffee dyed envelope. I like this Tim Holtz Field Notes, the black and white. I thought it complemented the music page on the opposite side with the black on the music page. I could have also used napkin or some other tissue paper, so there's lots of options there. But I like this with that music page. So I'm just trying to decide what section of this I want to use. And I go with this butterfly. So I'm going to tear off what I want to glue down onto this envelope. While I'm playing around with the placement, I thought it would be cool to fold this over and glue that onto the other side. I also was debating if I wanted to tear the top and the bottom edges as well, but I decided to leave those um, straight and don't tear them. And then I put a little, I thought I was going to use pumice stone, but I ended up using 
vintage photo. I decide to use my glue stick to glue this down and I did have a little tear but that's okay. I think it just adds a little interest to it and you really don't even notice the tear once you glue it down. You could also use Mod Podge or PVA glue, um, really anything. Um, the glue stick I think works well and if I want to go over it with a coat of Mod Podge over the top later I certainly can. Um, I did get some wrinkles as I was putting this down, but I, I, I think it's good to embrace our wrinkles, you know, like we do when we get older. <laughs> and I just used my blending tool to highlight those wrinkles and add a little more texture and dimension to the page. And then I'm going to glue the back side down and I get a little, a few more wrinkles and just, um, blend those with my vintage photo also. So I might come back and add a little more decoration to these, um, but I haven't totally decided yet. But right now I think it looks pretty good. On this page I decide to add this quadruple pocket that I made. This page is um, one of those ones I used my ink sprays to decorate, and I have a video on that if you're interested in seeing how to do that. It's a lot of fun. But this page pocket, um, I'm just taking some music paper, a dictionary page, and some vellum, and I tear them at differing heights with different uh, little patterns in the tear pattern, and then I stack them one on top of each other. And then I sew around the edges. Um, you can also just glue around the edges. Um, so you have lots of options there. You don't have to sew. And on the vellum there, I did some stenciling and a little linen tape and a mushroom. And I added a little label. And of course, I inked around everywhere. But I think this is a quick and easy way to add a lot of interest to a page. It's interactive because you can put fun little embellishments in each of the little pockets and you can even glue it down to where the very last one is a pocket as well. I also think that this looks really nice opposite that ledger paper and also I really like the green thread that I use for the stitching on this and like I said I'm going to make this a pocket so I'm just gluing around the three edges and then you get the quadruple pockets. I have a video on how to make these where I make a, quite a few of them. So if you're interested in that, I'll make sure to put that up in the cards so you can see that. And then just make sure it is glued in there well. And then I can come back and do a little more decorating on the page if I want to. Um, I'll have to think about that when I go through and do my final decorating in this journal. I love how that turned out. I'm going to stop here. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope this gives you some ideas for decorating in your junk journal. Bye. See you all on the next video. Love ya.